One thing that trips up new choice modelers is that choice data doesn't fit into the usual format we use for predictive modeling. So let's take a look at how choice data is structured. We usually organize data in rows where each row represents one observation. For the data here, each row is an observation of sales at a store and we have some information about the characteristics of each store. In this data, the number of rows is the number of observations. In a typical choice data set, we observe someone making a choice from a set of options that have common features. It's convenient to stack up the options for one choice observation into multiple rows where each row describes one of the alternatives. For instance, the first three rows of this data describe a choice from among three different sports cars. The first car was a two-seater with a manual transmission for $35,000. The second two options were both automatic five-seaters with one at 40,000 and the other at 30,000. To keep track of which rows belong to which observations, we have columns called quest, short for question, and alt, short for alternative. The first three values of quest are all ones, indicating that these three rows all belong to question one. The values of alt are one, two, and three, indicating that these are the three alternatives the customer chose from. The choice is recorded in the column labeled choice as a zero or one for each option. And of course, only one option was chosen for each observed choice. In question one, the third option was chosen. The second three rows describe another choice. It also has three alternatives, but that doesn't have to be the case. Some of the observed choices may have four or five or more options. The important thing to realize is that there is a row in the data frame for each alternative that was available and a set of rows make up one observed choice. Our ultimate goal is to fit a multinomial logit model to choice data, but before we do, we should do some descriptive so we get a feel for what's going on in the data. With choice data, what we really want to know is what people are choosing. One way to get a sense for this is to count up the number of times a $30,000 sports car is chosen in the data and compare that to the number of times a $35,000 or $40,000 sports car is chosen. We can do this using the function xtabs, which as you can see here, takes two inputs, a formula and a data frame. In the code here, the formula says, sum up the choice variables separately for each level of price. Because choice is a zero or one, indicating whether that alternative is chosen, the output is a count of the number of times a sports car was chosen at 30, 35, and $40,000. From the output, we can see that this data includes 1,010 choices where the chosen car was priced at $30,000, and only 324 choices of cars priced at $40,000. Not much of a surprise there, People like cheaper cars. <laughs> By the way, you could do this same calculation using the dplyr package if you prefer, but I find the formula input for xtabs convenient. So that you can get a feel for this, let's take a look at the sports car data in R.